and welcome back to another episode of PHT TV. As you guys all know, Paducah Home Theater always goes the extra mile to seek out the very best in premium home audio. And with some of the new lines of products, saying the extra mile is actually an understatement. Many of the new products coming to Paducah Home Theater are actually coming to you from the UK. This is made possible from a very special team of individuals, and we wanted to introduce one of them today. Uh, joining us, joining Corey and I today is Eric Smith with Fidelity Imports. Eric, can you introduce yourself and kind of tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. Hi, my name is Eric Smith. I'm with Fidelity. I'm the Director of Marketing and Education. So what I do is basically do a lot of uh, marketing communications, working with our vendors, working with our dealers, making sure they have all the appropriate information. But I think my favorite part of the job is actually doing training and education on product because we've got a lot of really great product that, let's face it, um, most people in the U.S. really have not heard of. So it's great fun sitting down and talking. And when I get the chance, showing and demonstrating the product, that's that's where the real fun happens, when you get to turn it on and you get to listen, because, you know, that's what this business is about. I'm definitely looking forward to that. A lot of this new product, I have not heard. So essentially what I wanted to do is I wanted to learn as much as I could about it. Uh, and then we're going to dive into some unboxings and some reviews. And we're going to start with the English acoustics today. I think that's what we wanted to dive into the most. And I've seen pictures. I've heard a lot about it, but I wanted to hear it straight from you guys. Sure, sure. So English acoustics, uh, just a little bit of history about them. They are a, just a small little hand-built um, amplifier company out of the UK. Uh, they started basically refurbishing the uh, Leak Stereo 20 amplifiers. It's a classic amplifier in the UK, uh, renowned for just being just that lovely, sweet UK sound, which is, you know, lots of detail with no sibilance, very open, very airy sound. Uh, and the engineer, Pete, um, decided, you know, we could do a better job with modern technology. So why don't we take this classic amplifier and let's remake it for the 21st century. So that was the Leak 20. So now they call it the Leak Stereo 21C, bringing it into the 21st century. Uh, so they made it so it's a little bit more robust, can handle a wider range of speakers. Um, you know, most tube amplifiers don't have gobs and gobs of power, and this is obviously not one of them either. So you do have to pair it with you know, efficient speakers, you know, Corey's very familiar with, uh, with efficient speakers, you know, clips work great on an amplifier like this, uh, but they wanted to make it so it could run a little bit more speakers. They put a board in it to make it a little bit more reliable and secure, and they can do monitoring, you know, and they, it's got a little meter on the back, tells you how many hours it's been running. So you know how old your tubes are. So when you need to replace them. Um, so they've just taken that classic technology, kept the great sound, but brought it into the 21st century. Yeah, I know the first thing I'm going to pair it with when I pull it out of the box, I think I'm going to throw it with a set of Cornwalls for the testing. <laughs> I think that'll be a great matchup for it. That'll be a great pairing. Yeah, and the nice thing about these amplifiers is they're all completely hand-built from soup and nuts in the UK. I mean, everything. But they don't hand-build the tubes. They, they, they're, they're not a tube manufacturer, but everything else about an amplifier is hand-built, you know, hand-wired. All the, the power supplies are hand-wound. Um, yeah, it is just a, it is a great bespoke piece of, of kit. And even to the point where we have, you know, four standard colors. Um, but if you want to take the extra time and expense, um, you can have them paint these in any color that you would like. I wasn't sure how that worked. Do we, uh, if somebody wants a custom color, do they send you a sample or do they send you the, um, the color digits or how do, how do they emphasize which color they want? Yeah, however they want to do it. So if, for example, you've got the Pantone, you can just give us the Pantone, done, easy. Or if you were trying to match it to the color of your car and you can say, oh, it's this brand and this is the name of the color, they can match it um, just like any automotive shop. So it's super easy. Um, we've never had an issue with finding a color. That is awesome. Uh, so pop, one pop, 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 question that keeps getting popped it, that's recurring is um, people want to know what exactly the tubes are, but more than anything, like where the where are they coming from? Because apparently there's a big tube shortage, and people are talking about manufacturing going over to Russia. And I don't know anything about any of that. So hopefully Eric knows. Uh, yeah. So I can actually I can if I can share my screen. 
so this is on the Stereo 21C, which is the first product they came out with. You can see here, you know, their EL84s as far as the output tubes go. Uh, and this goes over a little bit of all the things that we talked about as well. So, you know, it talks about, uh, you know, the power um, at 14 watts per channel. You know, not huge amount of power, but for a tube amplifier, it's certainly not bad. Um, but we also want to start talking a little bit about uh, the Stereo 41C. Uh, so the Stereo 41C is the next generation of products. So they wanted to make something with a little bit more power to it. And now we're up to 25 watts and we're using an odd little uh, uh, tube, the EL506. It's not that it's an odd amp or on tube, it's just the fact that it really hasn't been used a lot in amplifiers. Um, however, Pete, um, who designs these, um, saw a great uh, application to use these. And this, this amplifier, even though it's only rated at, at 25 watts, does actually output more than that. But we've run all sorts of speakers on this amplifier. So this one does not require a, a super sensitive speaker. Um, we were running Acoustic Energy 520 towers off of this amplifier and just absolutely hammering on them and, you know, playing you know, Ghost Rider. And it was just pounding through uh, the Hotel at Capital Audio Fest and people were just drawn in. Uh, so, yeah, if you need a tube amplifier that can um, absolutely perform, give you lots of power and lots of grunt, but still have that open, airy, classic um, British sound. Uh, the Stereo 41C, which is their second amplifier. That's the one you really want to go with. Okay. And Corey, are you going to be carrying the 41 as well? Yeah, Corey can uh, order absolutely anything from us. So if he's got a question. I mean, I can sell it, but, but I mean, yeah, it's, I, it's not like I can justify stocking them at this point. I'm, I'm having a, me personally, I'm having a hard time selling them, but... Uh, Okay. So the uh, the 21C is available. The 41C is available. Those are available to custom order as well, correct? Correct. Okay. So any color you guys want, pretty much any tier you guys want that they offer, you guys can get that in your home. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you keep in mind if you can expect so? This this absolutely makes no sense to me <laughs> because <laughs> eight hertz from a tube amp. That's insane. That that's not normal. Um, one of the best specs I've seen on the amplifier period is like with uh, Parasound Halo and they spec theirs down to five hertz. So right. for a tube amp to be able to do eight and be flat, that's insane. But on the high end too, and this is 60 kilohertz is, I mean, even the other one's even higher, 72 kilohertz. I mean, typically, at least my guys, there is this... Um, I don't know if it's an old wives tale or if there's something to it, but for whatever reason, a lot of them purposely seek out tube amps specifically for clips because they believe that there's this high end roll off that, you know, once it gets to six or eight kilohertz, it starts rolling off and all that shimmery, real um, ear killing upper brightness is, is kind of leveled and, and, and chilled out. But this is, I mean, that's one of the reasons I don't particularly like them, um, especially when combined with the distortion. A lot of people are, are buying these tube amps because um, a lot of them are purposely injecting a really high amount of um, second harmonic distortion. So I'm looking at this and it's less than 1% distortion. Most tube amps are minimum 2%, not 0.2. It's like a little minimum 2%. I've seen two amps claim 10%, but it's all on the second order harmonic. So this doesn't look like a two amp. <laughs> Eight to 60 kilohertz with that little distortion. What's going on there? Sure. So, so two amps have always been able to play a wide frequency response. And, you know, they generally do have a warmer sound than solid state. So there is that thought that yes, they're rolling off the high frequencies um, and they can, but they don't have to. Um, and now this is still gonna give you a warm sound, but it can play a wide frequency response. So that's gonna be important with modern electronics because now we're dealing with 
um, you know, high res. So if you're dealing with, you know, uh, 192.24, uh, you do have a wider frequency response. So you, even though you have a, have a tube amplifier, you still want it to play full frequency. Uh, so Pete, the designer, is he's, he's one of those, you know, mad engineers who, you know, nothing's ever quite good enough and he's always trying to make things better. Uh, and he, he really knows what he's doing. So he's been able to create this amplifier with a wide frequency response and a very low distortion um, out, out of a tube amplifier. Uh, and it comes down to uh, engineering and, and know-how. So, so when people are asking uh, what makes this special, that is definitely something to consider there. <laughs> it's not just the fact that you can order it. It is special because you can order it any color imaginable, but the, uh, the specs themselves are really impressive. Yeah, exactly. And it comes down to, again, it's, it's the design and manufacturer. So uh, the, the engineering, the design behind it, uh, and the fact that he really knows what he's doing. Um, he's, he's also come up with some, some very, very high output um, tube gear as well, which you know, maybe he'll come out with in, in, the, in the future, maybe not. But um, they are working on uh, fulfilling the line. So they started with the 21C, came out with the 41C to have more power, uh, run a wider range of speakers. And they're also looking at uh, other products to fill out the line as well. Uh, and we'll have more information on that when, when they give it to us. But you can probably guess where they might be going next. <laughs> Um, and it looks like with the 41C, they push the uh, the inputs and outputs to the back, as opposed to the 21C, they have the uh, the unbalanced on the front, correct? Yes, that's a that's a good call out. So the reason the uh, RCA inputs are on the front of the 21C is because that's the way the classic leak was designed. So it was basically taking that same style, that same design, and just bringing it into the 21st century. Um, with a little bit of feedback um, from a lot of dealers with the 41C, they put everything on the back. And because this is a step-up receiver, uh, added balanced inputs as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's really the only thing I don't like. <laughs> so. The front. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's, I your am super plans, what, what's your plans to um, have a um, like an integrated? Aren't you guys working on a on a separate preamp or is there gonna be an integrated? Yeah, so there's a, um, they were, haven't really announced all of this yet, but they of course, obviously as the line grows, it makes sense to have a preamplifier to go with your amplifier. And then maybe down the road, uh, create an integrated because integrateds right now are selling uh, quite well. So it makes sense to take a look at that. So um, as, as time goes on, you'll see a, a wider assortment of product from uh, English Acoustics. They really haven't given us a lot of details or you know, told us exactly what it's gonna be yet, um, but there's more, there's more coming. So tell me about this hand-wound transformer. What, what's the benefits to that? Having a, a really nice transformer um, allows um, good current, allows you to um, really control uh, the output. You'll notice that there's you know, very large power transformers on these. So that is one of the ways it allows it to basically run a wider range of speakers. So you've got more power backing up the output tubes, more energy, I should say. I definitely appreciate all the all the info on these guys. Uh, Corey, did you have any other questions on the? No, uh, I'm looking into my right while you guys are talking because mine is over here. <laughs> <laughs> Currently hooked up to the cues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I How's think that sounded for you. I like them. Um, yeah, the uh, really clean look, except for those wires on the front. Um, yeah, I'd, if I got another one, I'd probably get like solid white. So that the stereo 41 and white would be, that would be really sharp. That'd look good with the white cues, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they do have, and we can show you some images. Uh, they do have one, and I think it's old English white, which is a um, color that MGs um, were painted. So that's, it's, it's a gorgeous piece of kit. But that's the, I think that's when it comes down to it, when, you, when you're looking at, uh, amplifiers and if you decided that you want to go with that tube sound for that you know big open um, spacious detail sound um, you know why would you consider an English acoustics uh, and I think it really comes down to um, the fact that the engineering behind it 
they've taken a classic technology, you know, tube amplifiers haven't gone away, but they've really brought um, engineering and materials of tube amplifiers into the 21st century. So it's a very modern amplifier um, and it does give you fantastic sound. And if you do move up to the 41C, if you've got a little bit harder to run speaker, harder to run speaker, you can do that. But again, if you've got a really efficient speaker like a Klipsch, for example, the 21C has plenty of, of oomph behind it to run any of those and give you just a fantastic audio. That's awesome. And that's exactly what I'm going to be testing here soon. So um, after this interview, I think the next the next episode we're going to do is uh, I'm going to pull that guy out of the box and we're going to hook it up to some Cornwalls and see what it can really do. <laughs> be <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us, Eric. Um, if you guys could, please click that like and subscribe button below and we will see you again next week for another episode of PHD TV. Mm -hmm.